Hello and welcome back to Art of Awakening. This is Ona, your host, and today I've got another wonderful person here who is very connected to spirit, and um, we're going to spend some time with Stacy Mudenthal and just hear all about what she's bringing forward. Um, Stacy is a psychic medium, and she's a spiritual healer and a shaman, and she's partial owner of the Gyp Hip Gypsy Emporium in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. So if you're ever in Chambersburg, be sure to stop by there. Um, the reason I wanted Stacy on is because there's, she's just got this really dynamic energy. And I, I was just so glad that you are able to join us. And thank you so much for, for joining us, Stacy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Um, so Stacy, um, she actually has her own TV show, Connecting to Spirit with Stacy, and does mediumship readings, angel card readings, groups, and privates, and mentorship. And just, Stacy, you have such a compelling story of how you got into being a medium, because it's like, it's not typically the kind of um, career that people like a, a little girl or boy would <laughs> say, I'm going to exactly. be a medium, right? Exactly. And either, you share a little bit about that. Um, well, like several years ago, I was having severe panic attacks and anxiety attacks, and I felt like I was leaving my body. I couldn't have, couldn't be in a room with like ticking clocks because it felt like everything was coming in on me. Um, I'd actually sit in between my husband's legs and he put his hands on my shoulders because I, I felt like I was leaving my body. Wow. And I went to my doctor, <laughs> excuse me, and thought, you know, maybe I'm going, having dementia, maybe Alzheimer's, you know, the onset of it, schizophrenia, because I was seeing and hearing and feeling things. I couldn't walk. Um, like if we would go to Gettysburg, I couldn't just walk down the street. I, I felt like I had to dodge things. I felt like things were coming at me. Yeah. So um, went to my doctor and he assured me that I did not have menopause or the onset of um, schizophrenia or Alzheimer's or anything like that, but he had figured that I had like a PTSD from a past trauma, um, mm -hmm. anxiety, depression. So I went the route of seeing a psychologist, taking the meds, and although they helped, it didn't take it away. Right. And not until my mom passed um, in June, it was uh, a little over five years ago, I went to see a medium just to get that closure myself. Mm -hmm. And I had my daughter with me and the medium later, after we were finished, came over to me and she said, um, you know, you can do exactly what I'm doing. Like spirit has a very big message for you. And mm -hmm. she started explaining my anxiety attacks. She started explaining, you know, about the ticking clocks, feeling like my tongue was, was swollen and I couldn't swallow it. Mm -hmm. that someone was choking me. Um, and I didn't know, I just, you know, I always had like a good intuition, but I just thought like I was a good detective basically. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I had a long conversation with God and basically said, look, if this is what you want me to do, you've got to give me some dynamic signs because I was born and raised in the church and the church that I was raised in, what I do is mm -hmm. wrong. Right. So God started putting all these people in my path. And it was unusual signs and people saying weird things. And I was like, hmm, okay. So this is a message. And I met a gentleman. Now, we live in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. I met a gentleman in Howard County, Maryland, which is about, you know, 80 miles away, um, at a bike swap meet. And we bought um, his sticker business from him, basically, while we set up there. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, I just need, or said to my husband, all I need to do is get my tables. Um, how can we figure that out? Well, come to find out he lives like five miles from us here in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And when he came to pick his tables up, he told me that he thought that I needed to speak to his sister. And I said, well, why? Because I don't know. I just have this feeling you need to talk to my sister. So I gave him my card because I, I didn't just call people. I, I'm not just going to call somebody out of the blue. Sure. And Sue called me and she goes, normally I don't call people, but my brother was so adamant about, me calling you the you know i picked up the phone so what do you do and i explained to her about the shop and she said no that's not it and i was like okay well what do you do well she does whole being alignments she disconnects things from your past that you've brought through 
so that you can move forward in this life. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. So she lived in Colorado and she was coming to Chambersburg the following week. Mm. So she came here, she did a session with both my husband and myself, and I was very leery. You know, I didn't trust people very easily. Here I am in a meditative state with this woman I don't even know. She's in my home. But the things that she was able to disconnect from me made me kind of pause for a minute and think, hmm, maybe this is something I should be doing. So mm. I asked Sue to mentor me, and she was like, oh, no, I don't do what you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Okay. Um, but she had someone who was in Australia, who was a medium, who also did um, uh, readings and mentorship. And she said, mm -hmm. call LaSalle, have a reading with her, see how you feel and go from there. So I had a, a Facebook reading with LaSalle. And after the reading, I asked her if she would mentor me. Mm -hmm. And we did, I don't know if it was, I think it was like a six month class that was like once a month. Mm -hmm. And like the third class, she said to me, you don't need me. All you have to do is trust yourself. Like you've got this. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And I just, she said, just start doing readings. Know that you're not wrong. Just say what you feel. Your mm -hmm. message is to deliver what you hear, what you see, how the other person receives it. That's, that's on them. Your, your job, your service is just to deliver what you feel. And I did that and I started with just doing one-on-one -on -one readings. And then my clients would say, could I bring my mom? Mm -hmm. Like, okay. So then there would be two people and then there would be three people. And then I got comfortable with having five people. Mm -hmm. And now I do groups of 10 and I like to keep them intimate because mm -hmm. I want to make sure that everybody in the reading receives something either from spirit or from angels. And I've just recently been pushed to do like gallery readings, haven't done them yet, uh -huh. where there might be 25 people. So I, I'm, I'm still working on that. But Can you talk a little bit about that resistance? Because I think it's something that all of us deal with and, and the well, resistance and the fear and the distrust. Yeah, well, the resistance was, you know, what I was taught as a child, how I was kind of programmed. I mean, it's strange that when I was, when I, went to church and I read about and I heard about angels and God and spirit, I didn't really connect them all. I didn't think angels were still of this earth because there's now God. That's yeah. who you pray to. That, that's who you, that's where you go to for everything. But when I started, oh, when I started meditating and having conversations with God and then Archangel Michael would come in or one of my spirit guides is Enoch, you know, it just all seemed like it fit in place, but I have always been that scaredy cat. Even when I was a kid that, mm -hmm. you know, scary movies freaked me out Yeah, and mediums would, would freak me out because, you know, you're talking to someone who's not with us anymore. And, and I'll tell my clients at no time will my head spin, nor will I spit <laughs> pea soup because that's, that's what's ingrained in us. That's what society yeah. has kind of mm -hmm. told us. That, you know, if you commune with the dead, there's zombies, it's the apocalypse, it's, you know, ooh. but once I opened my third eye, when I was a kid, I used to have bad dreams of an eye chasing me around. Mm. And when I opened my third, when my third eye opened, like I got that flash of that dream. Mm -hmm. So I know as a kid, they were trying to communicate with me, but it scared me. Right. Yeah. So when you think about what religion has portrayed and what spirituality actually is there's such a gap in between it because now we've made it man's rules instead mm -hmm. of the universe you know what i'm saying right yeah 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 we've blocked that flow of the direct flow of the universe through us exactly exactly mm -hmm. but exactly. there 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 is a big fear about bringing through something that's not you know, not healthy or, or dangerous or evil, right? There's, there is that fear. Can you exactly. And there is that possibility. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you connect with spirit, when you're meditating, if you've got a very high vibration, like my vibration is so high, negative energy doesn't even want to deal with me. Mm -hmm. And I'm so protected. I had an instant just a couple nights ago where 
when I, when I book an appointment with a client, I take their name in the month and the day of their birth. So a half hour before they come in, I'm meditating on their spirit. I want to connect with them. Mm -hmm. And my guides and spirit will show me different things in my head. Well, I started seeing, it was almost like this, this square around these dark eyes that was in my head. And these mm -hmm. dark clouds were rolling in and the ocean, you know, the, the ocean was, was mad that day, my friend, you know, mm -hmm. and I thought, well, this is new. What does this mean? And I just kept feeling like I was being pushed back. So I told my guides, look, if I'm not supposed to meet with this person, you've got to have them not show up for their appointment and all my clients prepay for their appointment mm -hmm. and you have to show me a sign. Mm -hmm. So I've got my, this is my reading room here and I have a, a, an energy room right beside me and mm -hmm. the candle in my energy room exploded. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, that's definitely a sign. It was a little dramatic, but okay, yeah. it, it was a sign. But I think my guides know that they've got to give me such a clear, concise sign that I don't think, hmm, is that a sign? But so I'm cleaning like the candle up. And I said to my husband, you know, went over to uh, where we live and I said, look, I don't have a real good feeling about this person that's coming in. For some reason, my guides are kind of like pushing me away. Mm -hmm. um, so just kind of keep an ear out. But I told them to have them not show up and to give me a sign. The candle exploded. Um, of course, my husband's like, the candle exploded. What? <laughs> <laughs> so her appointment time came and she wasn't here. Mm -hmm. Five after wasn't mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. 10 after wasn't here. If you're not here by like quarter after to me, your appointment is over, you know, mm -hmm. cause I'm scheduled back to back. So mm -hmm. I don't know what it was about her spirit or the spirit that was going to come through to her, but my guides were letting me know this is not what you want to be around. Right. Right. So yeah. it's putting that protection up and listening. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Right. So if, if someone asks me if they come in um, to the shop and they want a reading and I feel like I'm being pulled back, I'll say, hold on a second. And I'll walk, you know, I'll, I'll go and do something for a second and I'll have a conversation with my guides so that I know whether it's my guides telling me, no, this is not the energy you want to be connected with, mm -hmm. or it was just something else. And then I'll go ahead and set the appointment or mm -hmm. not set the appointment. How, how do you distinguish? Because that, that is a, um, you know, is it really my guides? Or is it something else? That's something that can be really tricky to navigate and figure out. That's where you have to pause and take that moment and just, you know, take a cup, you know, I'll, I'll take like three or four deep breaths and close my eyes and visualize and I'll ask. Mm -hmm. And Archangel Michael is around me so much. Like when I had an aura reading done, it was, it was totally blue, the whole way around me. Mm -hmm. So I know Michael is just like, he's, you know, he's, he's got my back. Um, and I will literally feel myself being pushed back. Like, no, this is not where you want to go. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, they'll show me something like, you know, it's all right, go forward. In all the readings I've ever done, I've only had two where they've said no. Uh -huh. And one was just, you know, a couple weeks ago. Sure. Sure. So I had a woman come in when I first started re doing a reading, um, and her mom came through and my guide said, you need to back away. This is bad mm -hmm. juju. Mm -hmm. So I, I said to the woman, I'm like, look, you know, I, I'm still new at this. Um, my guides are telling me this is bad juju. And she just kind of smiled. She goes, well, we thought mom might have had an attachment before she passed. So that's okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, kind of want, maybe wanted something you wanted to tell me before, but in retrospect, if she would have told me before, it would have, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been able to discern it. I wouldn't have, you know, yeah. so, you know, five years later, I've brought this woman's mom through a couple times because I now know how to handle anything that might be negative because I know I'm protected. Mm -hmm. So it's setting that protection up. It's meditating and asking and then moving sure. forward with what your body, what your mind, what your spirit is telling you to do. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Do you have a favorite method of protection? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, meditating crystals, I have crystals all over the place, <laughs> you know, I have crystals on each side. I, you know, I, I wear them all the time. Um, but just meditating that white light of protection around me, I meditate every night before I go to sleep 
And then when I wake up in the morning, I do a shower meditation. So anything that may be negative from either a dream, maybe I channeled somewhere else, um, and just setting the intention that, that I'm protected and that it's going to be a good day. And I'll do that in the shower the next morning. Yeah. Yeah. So when, when you first started realizing that you were actually talking to people who had passed, mm-hmm. what, I mean, how did, how did you actually realize that? And well, you had a story, I think of um, somebody in the shower, right? Oh yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So I was, and when I first started meditating, I did the shower meditations because that was the easiest thing for me. A lot of people have problems meditating, getting the mind quiet, not thinking about other things. So when I was in the shower, that was the easiest way for me to meditate. First of all, I'm usually not bothered in there. Like nobody's coming in, you know, the phone's not ringing, but I was listening to the water coming down me and I could visualize and feel like it going over me. And I would just connect because that when the shower comes down to me, that's that white light. And I started seeing certain things. Like I would, I saw this cat and it had this line here at its face and I heard music and a friend of ours had passed away. I don't know, maybe two months prior to this. And I started talking to my husband about that and he goes, Oh, I know who that is. And I, so I called my friend who was his wife and I said, I, I kind of have something I need to talk to you about, you know, can, can we talk through FaceTime? Cause you know, I want you to see my sincerity behind it. So I started telling her about this and, and she was like, Oh my gosh, look. And she picked this cat up and it was his cat and the cat's all white. And it has like this black line right down its face. Wow. And when I told her about this muscle car that I saw with like three kids in front of it. She knew what that picture was. It was her and her husband when they were younger with another friend and he had this mm-hmm. muscle car. and the music that he brought through and things that he said, um, he was a, um, a sound man for a lot of rock groups in our mm-hmm. area. And the songs that, that he was singing were certain songs that like were his favorite songs. Mm-hmm. So it's that validation that I got that, Oh my gosh, I really got that right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, and I would journal everything and I still do journal everything mm-hmm. because sometimes our human mind thinks it's a coincidence. Right. Well, you know, all grandma's baked chocolate chip cookies. So, you know, that the smell of chocolate chip cookies wasn't anything, you know, yeah. that was just my mind. But when I go through that and I see, there was this one reading I did and the, there was, it was a group reading and the woman's sitting there with her arms crossed. Mm-hmm. And so I said to her, I said, um, you're just here out of skepticism because your daughter brought you through, brought you here. And she said, yeah, how did you know? And I'm like, well, first of all, your body language. Um, but I didn't know that was her daughter beside her. So that was one thing. And I looked at her, I said, so who's Isabella? Isabella keeps saying, tell her Isabella's here. And she was like, oh my God, that's my mom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so when I thought chocolate chip cookies, mm, you know, maybe I got mm-hmm. that. Maybe I didn't. Isabella. Okay. Right. Yeah. I, that was something I just couldn't have known. Right. You know? yeah. So yeah. sometimes it even like surprises me where I'll, I'll think in my head, holy crap, I got that. Wow. <laughs> it, it, you know, it still right? happens from time right? to time. Yeah. But um, in the beginning, it happened a lot. But, you know, in, in, my, in my human body, I'm thinking, yeah, okay. Yeah, I know I'm not wrong. Okay. But in my head, I'm going, oh, my God, I got that right. <laughs> right. <You know? laughs> so, yeah. And when it starts happening to you, and after a while, it's like again and again and again and again and again. After a while, it's like you just have to be like, oh, well, yeah, that, that, of course, right? <laughs> it, it, exactly. And I know that when I'm channeling, I am not wrong. I know spirit gives me a message for you, for me, for today or for tomorrow. So the message that I'm hearing is for someone in the room. It may not make sense to you today, but I've had so many people message me afterwards and go, oh my God, I wasn't even thinking about this. Yeah. Because you're all caught up in the moment of having spirit come through that you might not necessarily be thinking of something. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 
I have a quick question for you about your faith. And then I was wondering if you would be willing to do a little bit of bringing through, maybe just for the audience here. Um, um, okay. What I can do is I can grab my angel cards. Oh, cool. Um, let me just grab. But I, 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 had, I, I just wanted to ask this about, sure. because you said you had been in a church that really saw this as wrong. How has actually stepping into your, you know, your empowered truth of who you are, how has that affected your faith in your community and your relationships? Um, you know, I have a closer relationship with God now than I've ever had mm -hmm. because I talk to him. I see him. I, you know, it's, it's, it's a deeper relationship. Yeah. When I first started channeling and someone would say to me, oh, I can't talk to you because of my religion. I would say, oh, okay. And I would back off. Mm -hmm. And now I'll just say to them, can I, can I just ask you something? When Mary found out she was pregnant with Jesus, who came to her? An angel. When you pray, who do you pray to? The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You've heard of the gifts of the Spirit. One is the gift of, of healing. When you are praying in church, do you lay hands on people? Yes. What do you think that is? That's energy. That's, that's spirit. It's exactly what I'm doing. I'm connecting to God. I'm connecting to spirit. I'm bringing forth messages, you know? So some people will back away from me, mm -hmm. but for the most part, they don't. And when I first opened up, you know, if I would go, I could probably help you, you know, because I didn't want anybody else to know. I live in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. We're in an old school. We are literally surrounded by Mennonite farms the whole way around us. Right. I didn't want anybody coming in thinking they had to like shake a demon or throw holy water on me or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, once you get to know me, if, if it's not for you, I'm fine with it. I, I don't, I don't have to justify what I do. I'm not a party trick. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you don't believe that's fine, you know, that, that, that's, that's fine. Most of my friends from the church are still friends with me. Some of them are, you know, a little hesitant, but they've known I've always been eccentric. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, Oh, what's she up to now? Yeah. So it's just, I, I, I'm a child of God. I know I am. Mm -hmm. I don't need to prove it to anybody else. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? Beautiful. So yeah. I just kind of look at it that way. But it, at first it, it, it bothered me. There was only mm -hmm. certain people that I would tell or on my Facebook page, I would blur, block certain people because I didn't want them seeing what I was doing. Mm -hmm. But now it's like, this is who I am. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You're just owning it. <laughs> I'm just owning it. In church, you speak in tongues. How are you speaking in tongues? It's the Holy Spirit coming in you. Right. He's talking through you. It's it's it's, Almost that same, different, right? <laughs> yeah. it's 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 kind of the same yeah. thing. It's just mm -hmm. because it's been put in a box that only the pastor can talk to God and communicate to God and send the messages that the sheep think, Ooh, I can't but you can. Yeah. You have to have that own your own personal relationship with God. Angels just didn't disappear after the old testament. They're still right. here. Right. Very powerfully so, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. God's busy. Not, I don't want to say he's, he's busy. But, you know, just like, you know, the head of a hospital has certain people who have certain jobs. So right. does God. Exactly. You know? <laughs> so does God. I can go directly to God for healing, but he has Archangel Raphael, who is the healer. I can right. go to God for protection, but he has, like, he's delegated. Right. You know, or she's delegated, the creator, we'll just say the creator has delegated, you know, there's Michael. If I have problems communicating, there's Archangel Gabriel. I mean, there are certain angels that, like, that's what they do. Right. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah, absolutely. And uh, you were about to, to do a reading, right? Yeah. Um, yes. So yeah. I've got my angel cards here. And these are the energy cards. Okay. Um, so let me just, um, and this would be, do you have any particular questions or anything that you, that you want answered? Oh, um, well, I am wondering maybe um, 
rather than it being about me, maybe being a collect, would, would this make sense? A, a, a collective reading for anybody who is actually tuning and listening. Okay. Um, or it can be about me, whatever you feel. Okay. Well, let me just, let me just, let me just connect. Um, so the way I have it set up when I connect with angels, like I have them come through on my right or on my left. So I'm, it looks like I'm looking to my right, but I'm actually looking to my left. Yeah. When the spirit comes through, they pull me to the, to the right. So I just, let me just, let me just ask them. Um, okay. So, um, so this is an energy deck. Um, and this just kind of lets me know hmm, what's going on. It, it's almost like around in the circle is how they're showing me around the circle, um, around the circle, around the circle. So when you're talking to, and, and I'll have a conversation over here, sorry. Um, so when you're talking to me about around the circle, oh, so this is the connection. Okay. Okay. So this would be like the connection from you to me and the, the, the people that we are actually connecting with. So this is like the circle that we're connected with. Got it. Okay. All right. So let me just um, pull the cards and then I'll listen and then I'll, t I'll explain to you what they're saying to me. <laughs> okay. Um, so the first card that I pulled, which is funny, because remember how I said Archangel Michael is always around me? Very yeah. first card I pulled. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is Archangel Michael. Yeah. So uh, Michael is just letting me know, like, he, he's just validating, like, he's the protector. He's around us to protect us. And Michael is one of the archangels that he doesn't always just charge in. Mm -hmm. He'll wait for you to invite him in. Once you invite him in and like you constantly rely on him, that's when he's just always going to be present. So it's almost like, you know, how as adults and we have children and you see that they're having like a little argument with someone, mm -hmm. but you're just watching and waiting to see if they get into trouble where they need help. Like mom, <laughs> you want them to figure it out themselves. That's yeah. kind of what Michael was saying. Like, I'm here to help you when you need me. Some things right. you need to figure out yourself, but know that you're protected. And then once you continually, hmm, funny, he's messing with my elect or my, I, I don't know if you hear my CD skipping right now. It's no. just like stuck on a certain note. <laughs> um, hmm, hmm. A little bit of a showman. So know hmm. that Michael is there for you. Um, yep. But it's one of those things, too, that sometimes you need to figure it out yourself. When it really gets rough and you get all knotted up, that's when you have to go, okay, I can't, I can't do this. I need you here to help me. Right. And then once you're on that spiritual travel, on that spiritual path, that's when Michael's just automatically going to prompt you. And the reason why I'm going that way is because the next card that I pulled was door to spirit. Beautiful. Okay, so it lets me know that Michael is that protector of the door to spirit. Right. So spirit is coming in, spirit is connecting us, you, me, and the surrounding people that we're with. So mm -hmm. he's opening up that door to spirit, letting us know that spirit is around us. There's nothing to fear with that. It's just knowing that you're protected by Michael when you're connecting with spirit, but you have to call him in. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to bring that angel of strength. Mm. And the angel of strength, to me, it's twofold. Michael is definitely that angel of strength to, uh, to spirit, but we're also our own angel of strength. Yeah. Our spirit, our higher self is our angel of strength. How many times when you talk to parents, do they say, oh my God, my kid has such a vivid imagination. And they look at that as a bad thing. But right. that vivid imagination, that's still them. That's their higher self saying, let's try this. Let's yeah. try that. Let's do this. You're having conversations with who? I'm having a conversation with my imagination. Well, what's my imagination? That's me. So know that Michael is letting us know that like we're protected, but, but we have to connect with our own self-spirit, our higher self, and have that balance mm -hmm. and not have that disconnect. Because a lot of times when, how do you want me to say that? I had the thought, <clears throat> okay, all right. So a lot of times when we um, have an instinct about something, we pull ourselves back away from it because we don't trust it. Mm -hmm. And then 
what happens, you say to yourself, I knew I should have done such and such. I knew it. I felt it in my gut. I knew I should have done. That's that angel of strength. That's believing in your own self. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay. All right. So those would be the top three cards um, mm -hmm. in this. And I, I usually do like nine cards with this. So I'm going to pull another three, explain those, and then we'll look at all um, nine of those with that. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, okay. Hold on. I just need to move this so I can see the whole thing as I'm spreading it out. Okay. All right. So how do we do this? And then, and I guess that's why they're, they're pulling it this way. So how do we, <clears throat> how do we connect to spirit? So there's different steps that you have to do. And I have walking away and it's upside down. Mm. Okay. So when it's right side up, you see a, a woman who is walking through the gate. Um, there's the, you know, the light up here, but it lets you know that when it's upside down, like we're stuck, mm. we stay stuck. Mm. We're afraid to let go of those things from our past. Right. 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 We identify ourselves with what we've done in the past instead of learning the lesson and moving forward. Right. So if you're stuck, that's when you need to call in Archangel Raphael. Uh -huh. He's the healer. Yeah. He's the healer. Okay. And what that does is then that helps the angel of balance mm -hmm. come in. All right. So the angel of balance again is that first you have your angel of strength, which is your higher self. Now you've got that balance because Raphael has healed those things from your past that you've not gotten rid of. You're stuck. And the goal is to have the cards, of course, right side up. Okay. Right. So to get unstuck, that's when you have to call Raphael in so that you can find your balance again. Okay. Okay. This is, this is fun. Mm. Okay. Okay. I gotcha. They're laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> They have, they have a similar sense of, well, similar sense of humor than that, that I have. <clears throat> okay. So the, like the, the, the third step is the temple path. So you've got none stuck because of Raphael. Mm -hmm. You found that angel of balance. So now you're on the path of the temple. You are the temple connecting with spirit you're on the path they're putting those puzzle pieces there okay mm -hmm. the action is upside down letting me know that it needs action but uh -huh. it's not that quick action it's that pausing and listening and moving right. some people think that it's going to happen quickly and it does happen quickly for some people it'll just whoop and it's and it's open but yeah. you've got to you have to take heed in some of the action that you do my opinion there do i tell them that um there are, okay i'll put it this way so there are different tools that you can use it took me a little while before i was comfortable using the angel cards i don't use tarot cards personally because to me they're hard for me to interpret i have friends that are excellent tarot card readers who don't use angel and oracle cards because they're hard for them to interpret right so you have to find your tool that you're comfortable with. I use a pendulum on occasion. I don't use a pendulum a lot because it just gives me a yes or no answer. It doesn't elaborate on it. Right. I do use dousing rods if I'm, if I'm doing an energy healing on someone and I need to see where the issue is. Right. Or if someone has activity in their home, I can see where that's at. I don't use the dousing rods um, for house cleansings, because that's not my forte. I can do it. I don't want to do it. <laughs> mm -hmm, sure. Somebody tells me to, some, if, if a spirit tells me to get out, I'm getting out. Um, I never, ever, 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 ever would use a Ouija board. Uh -huh. My personal opinion. Yeah. Too many opportunities for negative energy to come in. It's a, 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 it can be, it can be a sneaky tool. Yeah. Um, there are certain mediums who are very well trained with it, know how to control it. Mm -hmm. that use it. I don't have any problem. Me, it's not, it's not for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 
you have to watch the actions, the tools that you are working with, what you're comfortable with. If you pick mm -hmm. a deck of cards up and you're like, ooh, I don't get a good feeling from them, put the deck down, find another deck. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. So yeah. you have to trust the, um, your mindfulness. How do I feel? What do I smell? What am I seeing? Am I hearing anything? You're pulling all of that in. Um, so you're on that temple path. Oh, you're on that temple path um, because you are taking small actions and testing what feels right for you. And the cool thing when you're doing all of this, what you're losing is your hostilities. See how hostilities um, is upside down? Yep. So you've gotten rid of the, that negative stuff that pulls your energy down because mm -hmm. you need to operate on a very high vibration. You can't have hate and jealousy and greed and things like that in a spiritual realm. We're all human. Yes, it comes in from time to time. But you have to be able to go, wait a minute. Why, why is this coming in? Mm -hmm. And pull it back to yourself or pull it back to the situation. Forgive yourself. Release it. Forgive the other person if it was something like that. Release it. It's not yours to hold on to anymore. You have to give it to the universe. So when you look at doing the spiritual journey, you know, Archangel Michael, it was the first card that we came in. So he's going to be that protector. So you need protection because we're opening up a door to spirit. Right. So you're protected because you're opening up the door. And what you need to do is have that strength. So that's the angel of strength. All right. Because mm -hmm. right now you're on pause. Mm -hmm. But Raphael is going to be healing that pause because the pause is the things of your past. The, it's it. like that mu mu muscle memory of the negative things that I can't or I was always told and, and all those different things. And when Raphael comes in, then that's when you find your balance. That's mm -hmm. when you get that center. Your chakras start to line up. You start to believe in yourself. You're meditating. You're slowing the mind down. You're getting rid of the things that you no longer need. And then that's when that actual temple path starts. Got it. And yeah. you're moving on to that with that slow and easy action mm -hmm. of kind of testing what feels right until you absolutely know what feels right. And right. through all of this, like you've gotten rid of your fear, your hostilities, your, you know, the things that you were taught or programmed from your human life to just go, oh my gosh, we are all energy living in energy. We all connect spiritually. Yeah. How can I be angry at spirit? How can I be hostile? How can I be afraid of that? If this is how I'm being led, if this is my true passion, right. understand? Right. Yeah. Beautiful. So, so pretty cool. Yeah. When I'm starting to pull it, like they're laughing at me, like, wait, why do you see this? Um, <laughs> So, um, you know, it's to me, especially because of what we were talking about, this is where we were guided for any of the viewers that are saying, you know, I'm afraid yeah. to open up to spirit, why or how, or, mm -hmm. you know, what do I need to do? You know, you call in your protection, that white light talking to Michael and you open up to spirit, you invite them in. A lot of times spirit is not just going to come in unless they're invited. Now, I did have chattering before to let me know that I'm here, but I had to say, okay, help me to receive all the gifts you want to give to me gently. Mm -hmm. When I didn't say gently, like all of a sudden, it sounded <laughs> like the room was full of, you know, it was like I was at a, in a crowd. I'm like, oh my God, one at a time, you know. They, they really do respond to being very clear, don't they? Yes. They give you clarity if you allow them to give you clarity. Mm -hmm but you have to get the human mind out of it. Right. All the things we've been programmed to believe, you know, there's a, a verse in the Bible that says walk by faith, not by sight. So mm -hmm. I have to have faith in knowing that what I'm hearing, seeing, believing in the spirit realm is what I'm supposed to be doing, saying, and being instead of, I don't want to say, you know, a school teacher, but I'm going to say instead of a school teacher saying, this is right, this is wrong, this is, or a pastor, this is right, this is wrong. I know what's right and wrong just in my spirit. You know, when you do something wrong, like your gut feels weird, your shoulders are tight, yep. you get a headache, like 
you, you know, your spirit's telling you, you're not supposed to be here. It's paying attention to that. Right. Paying attention. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. This is a beautiful reading. And um, for me personally, and I'm sure <laughs> for most people who are, who are tuning in here, <laughs> yeah. it's going to have, you know, a, a particular meaning for each person. Um, personally, if I can share a couple of things that, that hit me personally, um, a horse is like probably my primary core totem. And it, it's had a lot to do with, you know, learning to work with horse, which is a very, very forward moving, very um, kind of proactive, but it's, it's required, it requires a lot of balance. So that whole, the balance card and the action, you know, of one of, one of my personal <laughs> lessons that I'm still learning and, and, and have had to learn is this not not going forward with that impulsive action, right? And mm -hmm. learning to have, just as you were saying, that action that's kind of slow and steady. So that coming up was like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it made sense. <laughs> you know, especially moving into this coming year and I've got new things coming up and I'm sh shifting into this business and so forth. And um, so right spot on and very timely for me. And and I'm sure, I'm hoping that um, if, if you're listening to this and it's spot on for you, if you could comment below, um, would, would love to hear that too, because these readings, when they're done for a group, they're going to somehow, it's a, an uncanny how it works. There's that message that hits every single person that it's, that it's there for, typically. Mm -hmm. Well, it may not be for you, and you know because it is a group meeting group reading, but I think for most people who tune in here and who've lasted this long, there's going to be something for them as well. So, um, all right. Well, thank you so much. If, if, if somebody is listening in and would like to reach out to you, connect with you, work with you, what's the best way for them to find you? Um, well, I have a, a Facebook page and a group connecting to spirit with Stacy and it's S T C E Y. Um, I can always share the link with you. Um, you can message me that way. Um, I've got an email connecting to spirit with Stacy at gmail.com. So you can connect with me that way. Um, you can call or text, you know, uh, I'm pretty accessible. I'm very much a night person. So if you message me, don't be surprised if you get like a text back at one o'clock in the morning. Sure. You know? <laughs> um, and, and I will get back to people um, if they want to set up an appointment, whether it's a private reading or they want to do a group reading either here in Chambersburg or have me come to them. Mm -hmm. We can set that up. Um, you know, probably the Facebook messenger is probably or email is probably the easiest way, but um, you can find me. <laughs> I'm, not right. to, I'm not hard to you find. You said you were starting a YouTube channel as well, right? Yes, I am starting a YouTube channel. Um, it's up. There's no content on it yet. I'm figuring that out. But um, every Tuesday, I'm also on um, WB. Oh, gosh. I always get the uh, um, WBRG. Yes, WBRG Health and Wellness, which is an internet television station. It's on Roku as well as fire stick so you can see me on there um as well but um got a lot of things going on got a new book that i'm working on and you you, know, you just have that creative flow going you just have that yeah connection. they're pushing me on here yeah. <laughs> for sure i will post those links in the description box below okay. um so anybody who, who wants to reach out or connect or um you know subscribe or okay. like or whatever it is um uh, yeah be there for them and um so just thank you so much. And Absolutely. Um, yeah, just have a, a wonderful holiday and I'm sure we'll, we'll keep in touch. All right, sounds good. Neat. All right. right, thank you everybody for watching. As always, I really appreciate your likes, your subscribes, and especially your comments. If you've enjoyed this um, meeting with Stacey Needenthal, Needen, I'm sorry, Needen Needenthal. Needenthal. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I would love to hear from you and um, as always, love you all. Have a lovely day and we'll catch you again soon.